question, what is the difference between old wine and new wine? Right? What is the difference? You think I didn't find out about that? Right? <laughs> right? What is the difference between old wine? I got eyes everywhere. <laughs> but it's a good question. What is the difference between old wine and new wine? All right, Psalm 104, um, verse 15. I just pulled this chapter out of the, you know, the air. Uh, Psalm 104, verse 14, speaks about the Lord's works, and Psalm 104 is about the Lord's works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man. And it's like, wow. You're telling me that stuff that they're selling down at liquor and spirit store, that's good for my heart, it's going to make me happy? The question is, what kind of wine are we talking about here? Because whenever you read the Bible, all throughout the Bible, there are two types of wines. There's old wine, and there's new wine. And when we talk about rightly dividing the word of truth, it's not just Jew and Gentile, Israel and church, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. You've got to rightly divide old wine from new wine. They're not the same. Right? Old wine, if you want to go to Luke chapter 5, it talks about both of them over there. And there's a lot of doctrinal connections to the old covenant, the new covenant. Like, but I'm not even going to get into the doctrine. I'm just going to show you the separation between the two. The old wine in the Bible is... Um, is aged and fermented wine. This is what we would commonly think of, right? This is alcoholic wine. All right. New wine is not aged, it's juice. There's no alcohol. All right. Now, old wine needs something. Old wine needs yeast, i.e. leaven, to help ferment it. It's the agent that helps ferment the wine or the juice to create the alcoholic wine. This stuff is found in the cluster. So it's interesting because this is man-made, and this is God-made. Now we know that this is not good, and this is pure. Let's look at some verses. I'll add some things on to that now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I know my answer is going to be too plain for some of you. It's going to ruin your dinner party this tomorrow night. I apologize. Right? But you know what? Most of you wouldn't listen to me anyway, so you're going to do it anyway. So I'll just give it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, boy, that went over like a lead balloon. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6. <clears throat> um, I've always found that the hard things of the Christian life are my pride and my envy and my anger. If you told me I didn't have to eat something or drink something, that's so easy. That's easy. <laughs> but the hard stuff is the stuff that's tough. You tell me I don't have to drink that? Okay, you don't want me to drink that? I won't drink that. But try to not envy your neighbor. Oh my goodness, that's so tough. That's the hard stuff. So I'm not saying this is the only thing in the Bible, right? I'm not going to, I'm just, you ask the question, I'll answer it. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 6 says, Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump? This stuff uses leaven. <laughs> leaven is never good in the Bible. Amen. It's got six letters. Imperfection. It's corruption all the time. It corrupts things. Leaven infiltrates and changes things. He says in verse 7, he says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, even as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So leaven is supposed to get purged away. After Israel got delivered by the blood of the Lamb in the wilderness, God said, Sanctify themselves. They're supposed to get that leaven out of their coasts, not on their coasters. Okay? He said, get the leaven out. Don't get it in. Get it out. So if you didn't know anything else about the Bible, the fact that this thing is using leaven to make its agent to become the alcoholic wine that it is, that's the tell right there. Like, wait a second. 
I know, I know something about leaven. I've heard that in the Bible somewhere. It's never good. The Bible says over here, if you go to uh, Isaiah 65, I'll show you the contrast now. Isaiah 65 is about new wine. See, man does this. He messes around with this. He gives you this. God, you find this. You don't have to make it. You just find it. Isaiah 65. <clears throat> Isaiah 65, <clears throat> verse number 8. Thus saith, the new, uh, thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster. No age there. No fermentation there. Nothing rotten over there and sitting in a vat somewhere with yeast helping it to ferment. You found it in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. Amen. So will I do for my servant's sake that I may not destroy them all. See, this thing over here, this leads to corruption. This over here leads to a blessing. All right? I'll show you another one about that. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Look at Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> God says, get this one out. Purge this one out. This one, God says, this is pure. This is not contaminated. This have anything mixed into it. Just like God made it. Look at uh, uh, Deuteronomy 32. Look at verse number four, uh, 12. Deuteronomy 32, 12. Uh, this is the song, right? So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. This is when Israel was walking with the Lord. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. That's the juice. Pure, not contaminated, not mixed, Pure, just juice. Okay? Now, this is associated with corruption. This is associated with blessing. We'll see if you're Bible believers tonight. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's look at some. I could give you 50 other verses, but I'm just going to give you four. All right? Just in the book of Proverbs because they're in the same neighborhood. And then we'll come back to our question and finish it up. And again, this isn't the only thing to do right or wrong. This is just one thing among a million, but... I'm just telling you what the Bible says is the answer to the question. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 17. What is some of the corruption that comes from this vine and this wine? Right? The old wine. Proverbs 4, 17. The Bible says, For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Vi you ever heard of a bar fight? Oh, sure. Amen. <laughs> How about Proverbs? <laughs> How about Proverbs chapter 20? Keeping it real, Alan. I like that. That's good. All right? I'm not just talking to the ether. How about Proverbs 20, verse 1? Wine is a mocker. It's mocking you. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Not just violence, but foolishness and deception comes of this. All right? How many a lady has been taken advantage of because she's had one too many? And some inhibition was lowered that should have been there when they were sober-minded. How about Proverbs chapter 23? Let's look at verse number 19. Proverbs 23, verse 19. Um, be not among... Uh, 19. Hear thou my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Poverty comes of this. How many a guy do we talk at the mission or have met at missions, the New York City Rescue Mission, the Bowery Mission, the Jersey Shore Mission, Market Street Mission, that have lost their shirt, their home, their stuff at the bottom of a bottle? And how about Proverbs 23, verse 29? Watch this. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed, not pure, mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, 
when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself at right at the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an otter. None of those things are good, right? Sorrow, woe, fighting, babblings, poison. Now, let's flip over. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Let's see what is associated with new wine. This is how you see what the Bible says. Just see what the Bible says. Let God define the terms. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10. He's talking about following the Lord, right? Uh, you know, trust in Him with all your heart. And he says in verse 10, when you honor the Lord, verse 9, here's what you get. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. New wine is connected to plenty, to blessing, to abundance, because you got so much crop. Hey, we could press some of these guys and make some juice out of them. Right? And you read, Nehemiah has it. There's a bunch of verses that show the, the plenty and the bounty that's associated with new wine. God just giving you more than you need. Isaiah 65, 8, I won't turn there again, but we read it before. New wine is found in the cluster, and there's a blessing in it. How about this one? Zechariah chapter 9. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 9. I'm almost done. I really am. I'm not trying to rob a, ride a hobby horse. I'm just giving you the answer. Zechariah 9.17. Right? This is talking about the millennium. It's talking about, you know, the, the Lord coming back. Verse 14. Prison of hope coming up in verse 12. And verse 16, And the Lord their God shall save them in that day, second coming, as the flock of His people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon His land. For how great is His goodness, and how great is His beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful, and new wine the maids. It makes people cheerful. It makes their heart glad. Like Psalm 104 says. So, which wine from Psalm 104 makes the heart glad? We read over here, who hath woe, who hath sorrow, right? This one produces sorrow. Mixed wine produces sorrow. That one says right there, new wine will make the maids cheerful, glad. We'll talk about why in a second. So, I know the question comes up, didn't Jesus drink wine? Yes. The question is, which one? Right? Go to Matthew 26. The answer is staring at you. Look at Matthew 26. And if some of you people looked at these, I'm sorry if I'm repeating, but Matthew 26, look at verse 29. Right? Matthew 26, 29. Um, yeah, I'll get there with you. Matthew 26, 29. The Bible says, But I say unto you, Last Supper, right? I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. He's drinking grape juice. He says, this fruit of the vine. That means the grapes were probably on the table. The word this, you want it? You want it? You want some English? That's a demonstrative pronoun, demonstrative adjective. It means it's right there. <laughs> Give me this pen, right? Which one? This one. The one right there. This fruit of the vine, he says, the grapes are right here. I'm squeezing it. One day I'm going to drink it new with you. Not old. New. New wine. I'm going to drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. So he's drinking and he drinks the new wine in the kingdom. You want to see a picture of it? It's in everybody's favorite passage. It's at the wedding of Canaan. Because didn't Jesus turn water into wine? Yeah. But which one? <laughs> Rightly divide the word of truth. Which one? You think he made hooch? That had been the cause of people dying and people's misery for years and years and years? You think Jesus did that? You think the one that said abstain from all appearance of evil created the hooch that has ruined mama's lives and watched their kids get wrapped around poles? Are you nuts? Are you out of your mind? Take your verse and put it in your back pocket. If you think Jesus made that wine, I got nothing else to say to you. I don't know how in the world you could ever see the facts of sad and mad and all those agencies and think your Savior, your blessed Savior, created that poison, which the Bible calls the poison of asps. It's called poison, and you think he made it. 
hey, you want to have your cocktail at your dinner party? Have at it. I'm not spying on you. I'm not the Chinese spy grid. Do what you want to do. But don't try to make the Bible support what you think you like to do. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. I get real mad when people try to make the Bible say things it doesn't say. It just doesn't say it. No matter how much given to much wine you think that means, that ain't what it means. Okay? It ain't what it means. Old and new. Rightly divide the word of truth. Be a Bible believer. All right? Alois, be man enough to say, I know the Bible doesn't support it, but I do it anyway because I like it. <laughs> Just be a man about it. Say, I know, but I do it anyway. There's a lot of stuff I do that I shouldn't do. I eat too much. I know. I shouldn't. <laughs> I all think in moderation. But I'm not going to pretend the Bible says I should be what I shouldn't be. All right? The Bible's right and I'm wrong. Okay. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 1. All right? Didn't Jesus turn water into wine? Of course. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna... But which one? New wine. <laughs> Here's the picture. He said, hey, I'm going to drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And then his first miracle in public. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. It's on the third day. Hey, you know when the kingdom comes? On the third day? Amen. Uh, Jesus Christ went away 2,000 years ago, right? A one day, that's a 1,000. A two days, uh, that's a 2,000. The millennium is the third day since he's gone. Amen. The millennium, I know it's the 7,000th year, but it's the third day. He rises again in the third day. That millennial reign is the third day. So he shows up and he says, I'm going to do this miracle. I'm going to make some wine on the third day. Because I told my disciples, I'm going to drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom on the third day. And there's a marriage. The millennium is a celebration of the, of the lamb and his wife. Amen. Right? So, of course, at a marriage on the third day, he's making new wine, not old wine. That didn't sit in the vat and ferment. It changed instantaneously. Right? And when Jesus drinks it new in his Father's kingdom, that's what we're pointing to. And that's the wine that makes glad the heart of man. Because right. when he comes again in his kingdom, you know what everybody's going to get? Joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Run the references. Run joy and gladness through your Bible. It's connected to the second coming. He gives them joy and gladness. So when I read through Psalm 104, the wine that maketh glad the heart. It ain't the wino song that he's happy he's got a verse to hang his bottle on. No, it's like, whoa, when the Lord comes back in that third day at that marriage celebration, you know what? There's going to be joy and gladness and hearts are going to be happy. Amen. Right? Now, here's the last verse I'll turn you to. Go there with me, Hosea chapter 4. Here's the one that's a little tricky, but it's a nice verse to end on. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Look what it says here. <clears throat> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And their priests, there, there shall be like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways, and reward them their doings. For they shall eat, and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom, and shall not increase. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom, and wine, that's one. And new wine, that's two. Take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. So people read, they go, what's that all about? Well, first of all, that clearly shows you they're not the same. He says, wine and new wine. It's taking away their heart. They're getting carried away with both of them. You know why? Because when God's people get away from God, they can't tell the difference between good and evil. That's the problem. They can't tell the difference from the blessing and the curse. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And when you get far away from God, you stop seeing the differences. We're supposed to see the differences. But here's a people far away from God, and they're getting carried away with the blessings, they're getting carried away with the parties, and they're just mixing the whole thing together. So I challenge you tonight, can you tell the difference? Or are you so far from God that you can't rightly divide 
all of the word of truth. Amen? And that's it.